Hi, I'm Thrond here. Hi, this is Doug Graham. And we're here with a special episode today. That's right, very special. We've had a lot of requests for us to test axes on Gambeson, and we're going to do that for you today. And uh, we've even decided as an added bonus, we're going to test uh, and finally destroy our uh, Dodge uh, yeah, car hood. Uh, van hood. Yeah. Yeah, we had some requests on that as well to see axes on it, which it is a metal, and we tested the tip cut on the sword, realizing it would cut through uh, 20 gauge steel pretty easily. Yeah. Uh, so we're assuming the axe is going to perform exactly the same way as the cast blow with the tip of the sword on the European sword. We're thinking it's going to cut fairly easy into gambeson. That's so right. we're going to beef our gambeson up today. Too. That's true, we are. We're going to uh, do a gauging and test that out. Right, so yeah, we're going to gauge that with the uh, And we might even have a little sword. special thing at the end. Yeah, it looks like that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, for those of you who uh, keep up with us on the uh, Thane Thran YouTube boat crew, uh, that's our closed group on Facebook. Uh, those of you who are members have seen that uh, you know I recently this weekend cut all the uh, the hair off, and uh, I did that to donate to Wigs for Kids. Uh, that's wigsforkids.org. They donate uh, people's hair to children with uh, childhood illness or any kind of illness. They don't just affect children, but any illnesses that uh, cause hair loss. That includes uh, chemotherapy treatment for cancers. So that's been donated to some uh, lucky little boy or girl. They got my hair, and now I'm sporting the uh, Wolverine Berserker uh, pompadour hairdo there. and Oh, yeah. Uh, I wonder if the kid's going to turn into a Berserker when he wears your wig. That would probably make him really powerful, strong, and unstoppable. Indestructible. Yeah, unstoppable, I believe it. I think so. I, I appreciate that, A little brother. crazy, too. Ha! Yeah. Well, let's get crazy, man. I'm ready to start showing yeah, let's some do stuff. It. Let's do it. Yo! Yo! All right, we're back with our new Gambeson. We have a tightly woven... Uh, linen-like material, but it's actually a coarse uh, fabric. I mean, it's actually a coarse uh, thread, tightly woven. And I've got 16 layers. We're going to have to gauge it, test it again, pretty much, to see what it's like. It's not going to be exactly what we used in the other videos. But make sure we have a sharp blade, because we don't want to have people saying that this isn't sharp, and that's why it won't cut the new material. Sometimes new materials are just more difficult to cut, and we're not sure exactly how this is going to behave. But we'll go ahead and try that out. I'm going to try the draw cut on, like we normally do. See how it uh, slices. Did we get any cutting? Oh, yeah. Very, very little. Uh, this is 16 layers. I only made it through two layers with that draw, draw cut. I mean, drawing. That's pushing as hard as I can on this and then drawing. So you're not going to just walk up and slice through this easily by laying the blade against it and pull it. So we, we know that. The only cut we know that works well with the straight edge sword that limits the uh, amount of edge contact is a cast blow where I throw the sword and I actually cut into it and use the tip because when it compresses, instead of bouncing, you have a limited amount of threads that it has to cut through, even though it's cutting through a large amount of them this way and they're depth-wise, it's cutting through less of them this way. If you impact it this way, this is relying on the sword to draw. I mean, to actually hit, when it's such a flat surface, it's not going to move much. It's just hitting flat. Blades don't cut well that way. So uh, what ends up happening is you get the bounce, and then you're back to trying to pull and draw cut as you go through. So you lose a lot of the energy. This cut, the tip, when we're hitting with the actual tip, and what I'm considering the tip is this portion of the sword, a good uh, third section of the front of this type of blade, it's pushing in and cutting at the same time. So all of our energy is there. So let's see what happens when we make it through. This is tougher gambeson. All right, as you can see, we've got a cut in it. It's not very deep. It's mostly just the tip. And uh, I'm not even sure it made it through the last layer of fabric. I think it actually poked into the bottle like it ruptured the skin and forced it in. So what we've got here is we've got a small incision, not as big as what we got before. Uh, could have been my blow, I'm not sure. A little less, but I think this amount of material and type of fabric we got. Uh, I may even tailor it down a hair for axes, but I doubt it. I'll probably just go with that because I think the axes will be able to do the same feat. Using the tip portion of the axe, not the whole flat of the axe, I think it'll be able to actually cut it as well as bash it, you know, as to actually do a bludgeon damage. Well, let's try that other cut I spoke of real quick, just to, to, to demonstrate it. Uh, I'm going to step and cut and see if I can cut into it, like I said, that we had trouble doing. So, No cut whatsoever. 
still have water in the bottle or what it's got. So try this again. So it makes it harder with the bottle having a hole in it. That was kind of a tip shot there, so we cut a little bit of fabric, but there we go. Okay, I got the Francesca, uh, the Frankish uh, battle axe. Uh, there's been a lot of theories on the shape of it being a lot like a uh, uh, spike on the back of a war hammer or military pig, and then having a smaller axe head that it was good for piercing armor. And I kind of see that with our testing showing them the less blade that makes contact to materials such as gambeson that you can slice through, uh, the, the better it does because there's less fiber to cut through, which makes perfect sense. Uh, uh, physics wise because you have a smaller area just like thrusting and you're trying to cut a smaller region and start into it and you're only cutting that small amount of fabric not the entire long section that makes it impossible and not a force but so what I'll do is I'll start off with the flat type hit relying on just the small uh, surface area uh, blade and the curvature and this shape to see if I can punch through the bottle now I'm thinking I might punch through the bottle and damage the bottle or knock it off, but I'm thinking it's probably not going to make it through that many layers, but it could surprise me. So let's go ahead and try it out and see how this behaves. All right, I hit with the flat that way, no tip shot, and it didn't go through. I'm sure that would have hurt, but it didn't go through. I'll go ahead and try that one more time. Might as well. Cap's tight. Try another good one like that, but really powerful. Ah! Ooh, we made it! We actually made it, but I think it was more of the back corner of the axe they cut through. That back uh, downward sweep is part of the beak? Yeah, it also might have just ruptured our bottle, but it also cut through our gambeson. I'm thinking this back part actually made it, but that's what happened. The beak. I'll get this off and check saying we made it through all those layers. It actually stopped the first cut. I'll try to find the hole in a second. But it may be a rupture, because this kind of force, when you're hitting like that, actually can, yeah, it's a rupture. I don't think that's a cut, that's just a ruptured bottle. Because these bottles are not like ballistic structures. So they can't rupture. I think there's a mild cut and a lot of rupture. But we did get a hole completely through. So a point of it made it through. I have the Nordic axe here with the uh, beard uh, pointing up. Uh, we get a lot of controversy about this uh, this mounting that we use, uh, Thrand and I use. Uh, Thrand introduced me to this and, and I've come to really like it. Uh, and we're about to show you kind of why it's it's so great to, to have your beard pointing up. Uh, one of the reasons is on this tip shot we're about to show. First, we're going to test it with a flat shot on our Gambison. Uh, how many layers is this, Thrand? 16. 16 layers. We left the same amount. Yeah, All right. so. First, we're going to start with the flat shot, so I'm going to step back and, and just mine up and hit it right on the flat. Oh, I bounced a lot. I got a little bit of cutting. Yeah, just a little, but the, the flat and the bounce, just it really prevents me from getting much of anything. So now I'm going to try and tip shot it, and we'll see that the tip shot will... Yeah, just make sure it's pressed. When you hit with the tip, make sure you're going into the bottom. Yep. Punching into it. That's right. I do believe. Yep. And that is a cut because I noticed the amount of force you hit it with. There was not. Uh, there was not uh, a rupture. That's a cut. That is a true cut. Yes, and it's because and of the length of this the handle. Pointing up. It's the length of the handle, and because it adds some. What would you call that? Some extra force from from the right. It handling. acted just like the uh, it acted just like the sword tip, right? The cast glove, but even easier. It seemed like you didn't use any effort at all. Not at all. You I mean, it was so the, simple. You just threw the blade out and let the tip cut because it's pointing up. It gives you a little more uh, uh, reach. I guess, or I should say, reach, but uh, uh, the ability to penetrate deeper into the gambeson and cut. I, I, I'm. I, this is why I like the uh, tip pointing up on this axe. I, I find this to be the best method. Um, 
Uh, everybody did it by preference. We find well, the, axe the, heads and the graves. Hook is good for hooking stuff as well. So I mean, it is very useful. We've proven that one. Well, well, yeah, but uh, what I was going to say is that we don't ever find the hafts or how they were mounted in graves. We just find the axe head. For all we know, it's just user's preference. So my preference, like Thran's, is to have the point up, and I like the long handle because it acts like a sword on a cast bludge, like Thran said, and uh, it made it effortless. This is so easy. I love it. It's awesome. Yeah. I don't think this is much of a challenge, really. I think I think we're gonna have to go to the car hood, Thran. Oh, most certainly. I thought we'd have to go to something a little tougher. Yeah, that's a lot of layers of fabric. That's all. I'm what do you think, Brandon? I. Yeah, that is a lot of layers of fabric. That's all I'm saying. And we got a nice cut. I mean, that's a cut. We don't. Have that was gorgeous. We don't have a rupture. This is awesome. Such a great little axe. Uh, well, they're famed for uh, defeating armor. I guess it wasn't just uh, mail or uh, uh, you know uh, plate or something later century they were no. talking about. They were talking about early cloth, which we think is the first uh, textile armor that was, was was its main use. I mean, it's what it seems like. Yeah, it, this is so cool. Uh, I, we gotta go move on to the hood, guys, and uh, challenge these axes more. So uh, stick around. Let's get going. Oh. We're back with a medieval shop, uh, Francesca. Uh, it's performed well. On the cloth, we were thinking it was the back of the edge somehow. I don't think that. I'm thinking that due to the shape of this as it impacts, the blade is pretty much forced to, because you can't have your hand past the target normally, uh, it's forced to hit and curve in with that tip type shot as it cuts. So if you kind of see what I'm saying, it's hitting and doing that type of thing. This may be what this axe was designed for, as it hits the material if you're watching. The curvature causes that effect, which of course, that's pretty deep. So let's see what happens if I try doing the same thing on this hood, and if it's possible to cut into that material. Why, it sure was. We've got a hole clean through, and it's stuck in the hood. The shape of the axe allowed it pretty much allowed it to do this and it's cut. It's not just split, right? And then cut. We've got it completely through. Pull that out. That was brutal. Right, this is probably about 19 gauge steel or so. It's pretty, pretty, pretty stout. And it doesn't appear to be much edge damage whatsoever, but I honestly believe, now that I've analyzed this design, he said it's for piercing armor, not only for the throw, but I think that it causes it to hit in such a way with a smaller head and angle that it forces you to do that type of cut. So that'll make it easier to cut the gamison, maybe cut, cut a couple of rings of nail, possibly, depends on how you hit it. It is possible to cut nail with the seat. It depends on how thick the nail is and the gamison. You can make the factors where it's impossible, yes. But can you wear that much weight? Would it, would it be too cumbersome? But just saying here, that finishes the size for it. Awesome. And I would like to make a note. That doesn't look anything like a bronze spear thrust or other period spear thrust. You can see these all through our hood that we've tested them. The bronze spear went through. And uh, if you look at the old Etruscan helmets and the Greek helmets, what they're trying to say are, are axe, axe blows that might have cut into them. I don't think the axe looks anything cutting through uh, uh, like one millimeter steel or no, one millimeter bronze as a spear point. Here. Hit a couple more times just to make sure this isn't a flu. Or maybe I'll even come in tippier to see if I can slice it. Went through the double material, but we've got a cut, nice slice. Do it again. Oh, wow. That was brutal. That was brutal. Whoa. I like the way that went in. That was sweet. That was so awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm impressed with the axe. I think the curvature is aiding in this effect. I really do. It's causing me to have to hit it that way where it gets to dig in that way. And I'm thinking that that had to do with the types of armor worn and uh, it was used as a hand axe in battle compared to the shields. One of the reasons I'm throwing some blows from the back this way. Uh, I think that's what it was for. Whoa! That's nasty.
it really is nasty, the damage it's caused. Unbelievable. And it's holding up quite well to give a testimony of the axe. This edge is not chipped, and it's still very, very, very sharp. Hey, save some for me? Dang! Alright. Got the Nordic beaked or bearded axe uh, with the beak pointing tip forward, which is uh, not necessarily a signature thing to us. The ancients did it as well. So uh, we're pretty sure why they did it. We were getting a pretty good idea that on these tests, uh, at least with the Gambeson. So now, like Grand did with the Francesca, I'm going to come back and uh, try some tip shots with uh, the Nordic beaked axe and see how it goes. Everybody can see that. That's the point. Definitely aids in that type of cut. I'll try I'm reaching out to get somebody. Still makes amazing impacts, no matter what. It's an awesome, awesome blade. It was still cutting into it. It's just not. Yeah, you see the puncture. They might have lacked a little of the force too. Well, I know I'm catching with the tip based on right. what's happening here. It's just. Yeah, it still feels kind of sharp. Hmm. Well, maybe I was getting too much tip. Too much tip, by the way. Yeah, but this is where you're getting the perfect shot right here. Right. And I think that is the idea on the Francesca is to limit, the, to make sure you have the maximum force against that tip as it cuts. And I think so. I, I think that was the right. idea. I think for the other type of. Uh, acts you have to, if you want to do that type of cut, you have to focus on it. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah, right. Yeah. I think you're absolutely right. I want to see how the I other acts do. With me, it was effortless because it's shaped the axe. That's what I think. I think so, and I think with the beak pointing It'll face work, forward. But you have to get, you got a time to just start getting Just it, so. right. You just oh, enough of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was on my downward sweeps. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, one of my downward very sweeps. Good, very yeah, good. that, this is, the axe has performed very well in that situation. That's very cool. Let's try some others. We're gonna have a little fun here. We we decided to test a theory with uh, the hitting with most of the edge. You know, hitting with the most of the what would you say like the flat? I guess correct. Flat of the edge on on the bottom with both hands, and we're gonna see, you know, just how that changes these things. I think our theory is that it's not gonna go through. It's gonna bounce or more it's, likely or indentation, a deep mild indentation, cut. like yeah, a hammer cut. maybe, like a yeah, like a mass weapon or something. So let's see. Did it make it in? Yeah, it did. How far? Very far. I think our theory was wrong. This might work better. I'll try another one just to make sure I'm not tipping it. You also got two hands of power there. No, I'm, I'm getting it. I got deepest on my first one. Would it have injured the guy very badly? Flat. To that? Would it have injured him badly? The depth of penetration. Uh, it, if he didn't have any gambeson under that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it went in. I had a lot of my plate in there. Oh yeah, if you had that much, uh, you know what you did? You came in with the back of the edge. You didn't get. You can't help it. Right, right. But it was because it deformed it so much. That's why that worked. So I guess with the extra force, it's possible. I think what we're getting here is some of these didn't go in. So no, it that's it. Isn't the most efficient way to. I mean, these are more play. flat. This one, I almost couldn't help it. All right, you hit with the back. We basically ended up with the same tip principle. You've got the back going in. So really, the axe just gives you two tips. Yeah, if you hit more this way, it will still work. If you hit more this way, you can hit as well. Yeah, so, so if you're at an but advantage you hit either flat way. All, there's a chance if you're hitting something that's very hard to cut, what it shows us is that it might, it might actually take more energy than it has to cut it. I think I think we've got we've discovered something. Actually, no, that's really cool. Yeah, that was I'm a nasty impressed. cut. 
But it's because that's what it is. It's because we've got a point at the back, which I think I did that in one of my videos. For us. If it impacts with this point first, it looks like what happened. Yeah. You basically used it like a, a spiker or. A yep. Well, I wouldn't even military. Point. I wouldn't yeah, even attempt to do that. Yeah, you can't. But it shows that that's a possibility. But that 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 being unintentional though shows that you can't help it with an axe. You almost right. always you sit hitting there that, that way as well. Yeah. Yep. You almost can't help it. Right, right, I totally see. Now it makes sense now, you're actually hitting the back point and it causes the drive. The same as we have with the tip. Again, I think axe design leads you to do that even if you don't intentionally mean right, it. Right, and that is deeper than I expected. I didn't, I didn't look that deep when they stand in the back, and you even hit the back, back piece of metal. Go ahead, press it. There we go, I'm back with the bearded axe. Uh, this is my axe I've had for years. Uh, I just wanted to try the shape. That's what I'm mostly doing here. Try the shape out and see how it performs if it, for, with the uh, beard down. I've had it with the beard up in some videos, and I consider it beaked or horned that they might have done that with certain bearded axes. But uh, I mean, it's just to try it out to see what, what kind of effect it is. If I hit with the tip, apparently cuts very well. If I hit with this with a lot broader blade and shape, when I'm hitting flat, I'm having the same problem with the flat shaped axis that Francisco didn't appear to have. So that, that's, it looks like that's what's going on. I have a feeling if I flip this over, we'll have the same effect that uh, Elv had with the, uh, or Elgrim had with the uh, Nordic axe from Medieval Shock. But that's just to test it out, it's just a theory. Go ahead, beat it up some more, dude. If you hit with the tip, even with the small amount of tip we've got, it's still able to cut. But if you have a little extra tip, it just goes to show you might have a little more cut in your canvas. Nice! That sliced straight down. And that is a cut, believe it or not. A cut there. Not bad. I'm actually impressed. Each one of those is actually slicing and cutting. Even with the tip the other way. But not bad. Not bad at all. I'm really impressed with that. I, I want to see those up close. It's a lot more impressive than I expected. God. It's ability to cut gamison and to cut through one millimeter steel, about one millimeter steel, 19 gauge steel is very, very impressive. It's around 20 to 19 gauge steel if they make these up. This one feels extremely tough, so I'm going to guess it's about 19 gauge. Right on. That was probably one of the most impressive. God, the damage is unbelievable. I mean, look at the size of that. With my thumb against it as a contrast, it's just insane. Yeah, I ended up somewhere. Look how much you got in there. All right, we've got one last test, and it was proposed by Thulian Perspective, our yeah. shield brother there. Uh, and we will be getting his review on his new 2.0 My Farog out soon, very soon. Should be our next video. Yeah. Hopefully. And, and we'll, well, anyway, we decided to add this in because he asked us to do it. Well, yeah, rocks in uh, My Farog, for those of you who have not uh, bought the book yet or tried to play the game yet, Rocks, he actually has damage tables for and uh, for different sizes or mass and right, uh, right. different levels of skill of throwing are involved. And we have so, some rocks, but we have some bricks as well. Yep. So, yeah, we're going to try a little bit of everything. We're going to try. We're just going to brick. We're just going to destroy this hood. This is it for this hood. It's done. We're going to have to get a whole new one. So, oh. if anybody's got a donation for a new hood. Oh, yeah. Our whole car, it. for that matter, will do yeah, the uh, bring Street it. Fighter uh, tear the car up. Uh, yes! Yeah. I always right. love that in Street Fighter. <laughs> Me too. That's cool. Let's do that someday. Yeah. All right. Fire away, friend. Whoa! Oh, that's a nice dance. Oh, yeah. Here, I want to try a brick. Sure. I'll pick up a rock. Oh, that dent was gnarly. It even knocked some of the material from the back. Let me try a rock. Should have better aerodynamics and be throwing a little easier. Oh! It bounced. It did bounce a lot. I'm gonna do one of my big, I'm gonna do one of my big major league Cy Young windups, and uh -huh. I, I'm doing this uh, in honor of the Rangers who won their first uh, uh, American League uh, uh, Division Series uh, games against Toronto today. So big shout out to the Texas Rangers. Way to go, guys! Keep it up. You're all heart. 
So I'm going to do my big major league wind up here. I'm going to try and destroy this hood. Let's see it. Ooh, nice blow. You knocked the whole thing over. Wow, a lot of impact. I was impressed. Let's set it back up and do one more volley for Bard. Yeah, another volley for Bard. Yeah. Ugh. I'll use bricks, I don't care. Yeah. You want me to go? Go! <laughs> These things get hard to throw after a Nice! Ready? Get it! Oh. Yes! Oh, nice, nice hole! Nice hole with it. That's nasty! Oh, the dents are insane! Yeah, I know! <laughs> but I had a for fun. Hey, I'm having fun. Yeah, there's no more fun in the world than standing around throwing rocks. We spend and bricks. Our sponsors spend so much money on weapons for us, and the most fun toy we have are bricks and rocks to throw. It seems like it. Seems that way, but we just make it look fun. That's all. <laughs> all right, one more volley. All right, ready? Ready. Here we go. Nice with the full brick. Oh, woo! Yeah, nice. Uh, well, I think that was certainly a lot of fun. There, we no knocked doubt. all these holes through this. Uh, we tore the metal up. It's pretty much uh, it's irreparable. I mean, there's no it's, way. Yeah, it's irreparable. Do. And, I mean, God. there's nothing we can do with it. We're not going to be able to. Do it. Yeah, that's pretty much the end of our car hood. Yeah, we're going to need another one. Or we're planning on retiring it anyway, so thanks to Lynch Perspective for your uh, suggestion. suggestion on trying rocks. I know bricks aren't rocks, but they're pretty close. No pretty doubt. Close. Uh, and we had a, we had some rocks. We're just yep. short on rocks today and they know where to get them. Our axes performed beautifully. They performed exactly like they're supposed to. I think so. Everything I think did exactly what it was supposed to do. I believe you're right. I think it really did. I had a lot of fun doing this. Everything was uh, really uh, just devastating, vicious, brutal. And, uh, you know, our new camera guy, I think, uh, is working out really well for us. Uh, he got to take a couple of yeah, shots. Yeah, two or three few shots yeah, today. Come on too. out and take yeah, a bow, brother. Hi. Right. You did great. You did great, Brandon. Yeah, man. This, this is uh, great. Roger. Brandon He's a uh, new camera guy, new addition to the, to the, to the YouTube channel. So, uh, you know, everybody can say hello to him in the comments, threads. And uh, also, uh, be sure, guys, if you like our videos, to uh, check us out and uh, hit like. Uh, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Uh, we love subscribers. Uh, it's subscribers that make this happen for us uh, and it keeps these coming your way. Uh, be sure to comment in the comments threads below. Uh, you know, we had a lot of fun today and just, uh, you know, we're, we're happy always to have you talking to us, interacting. Uh, if you want a further interaction, you can always catch us on our Facebook page. That's uh, Thrandon Elgamer's Well of Remembrance uh, on Facebook. And that's our like page. You can also join our Thane Thran YouTube boat crew. That's, uh, that's a closed group that you can uh, type into the search on uh, Facebook and you can find us through that. You get exclusive content on all things anachronistic, uh, exclusive set photos and uh, exclusive video content. And you can talk one-on-one -on -one with Rand and I anytime uh, about anything. And uh, we appreciate you watching. Thank you very much again. Don't forget to donate at Patreon, www.patreon.com or through PayPal. And uh, you guys take care and farewell. Farewell. farewell.